All right. Good awesome. Wednesday afternoon. Uh, it's our Mortgage Wednesday with Nick Marinowski uh, from Gatorade. How's it going, Nick? Very good. And uh, just to make a correction, it's Winning Wednesday. Winning Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> That's how we do it. <laughs> we win. we do. Winning Wednesday. And it's, it's funny, too, because, like, you know, we've talked about this on a couple of calls, like, not just with you, but with, with other people as well. Like, just maintaining a routine, I think, is really – um been very valuable right now because yeah. you know if, if i didn't have these calls with you with john with shane mary beth and i are doing daily 11 o'clock calls i think it would feel a lot less structured and i feel like i'd be a lot less productive so i think it's you know i don't know if you're experiencing that but it's, it's nice to have these uh kind of a little bit of a new normal routine yeah yeah no i i agree it, it keeps us uh uh in touch with everyone it keeps us close to the ground i i always thought that uh you know, my uh, biggest advantage, um, you know, being partner of a mortgage company is uh, to be very close to the street, to, to the agents, to the concerns of, of, of everyone. Um, and then understanding the whole process through um, kind of keeps us, keeps us all in, in, in check and, and uh, the best at our, uh, at our game here. And um, yeah, this, this has been, you know, great because if I didn't talk to you once a week, yep. you know, I, or see your face like that, that it wouldn't be as many people that I, that I get in touch with. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Cause you're, you're like me on, on our own. So it's, yeah. It's, at least on a professional, at least on a professional, you know, like, so like I talk to a lot of clients and, and that's, uh, you know, ter terrific, but, you know, honing in on that professional, um, togetherness, you know, is, is really what, what, you know, I, I think it starts to, to move the, move the needle and set us apart and go forward. For sure. And I think, you know, you can talk about, you know, current rates or anything that you're seeing today or, or this week. Um, but I know on a lot of the calls, even with agents, we are seeing a, a huge demand for buyers, you know, in, in the buyer. Yeah. World. We need more sellers to start listing uh, properties, but, but the buyers are getting back into the market. Yeah. So I'm going to just explain to you, you know, how this has been really working for us or how people work with, with get a rate. So currently on my team, there's me, there's uh, Glenn Kersinger, who, who before this lockdown, you know, did an awesome, uh, you know, meet. I brought him to the office. He's a 25-year veteran. And then I have uh, Ileana Mejia, who's, um, you know, who has like some real estate experience, has access to MLM, can, can really, you know, help with, with a lot of buyers. So what I've been doing is if, if, if anyone is, is referred to me, you know, I tend to uh, email or call that buyer first, or I have someone from my team reach out immediately. And then we're all together put on uh, in our CRM uh, and updated on that file um, all the way through. And so the, the, the two things that I can say is that some buyers would want to, hey, Mary Beth, how you doing? I just uh, zoomed right in. We zoomed right in. You know, <laughs> Sorry, some buyer. Yeah. And so what's been really great is that, um, you know, I never really met too many buyers face to face. So this is like kind of like an easy uh, transition. But what we've been able to do is say, hey, if you have an idea of what you're, what you're qualifying for, use our digital mortgage application and get it done in 10 minutes on your own time. And then I'll call you or then we'll reach out to, to show you how it looks. Or I say, hey, let's schedule a meeting, and that meeting can either be a phone call or or Zoom. So um, we've done, you know, buyer consultations like this, you know, with, you know, me, the buyer, and and maybe one of my colleagues, you know, as as kind of like a, you know, that you're in good hands, and that you have essentially, you know, you have a specific person that you're assigned to, but you have a whole team behind you. Um, and then we get back to the agent with, you know, here's the pre-approval and we, you know, send it out to, to them or send it out to the client copying the, the agent. And it's, and it's been, it's been really smooth and easy because it's always been our process to do it this way. So we haven't missed a beat. There are tons of buyers in this market. This is, this is like, this is like, I, I'm starting to say it's, it's, it's like a tale of two cities, right? It's the best of times, the worst of times. You have all this unemployment and, and obviously this pandemic, but at the same time, you have record low interest rates and buyers that just won't quit. Like they just, they just are coming out. So it's like, you know, relentless. So relentless. So which way do you want to look at it? So you could look at it like, look, this is an opportunity, and this is the best of times. And certain, and if you look at these two things, like that's extraordinary. And then you have, you know, the worst of times where you have like some unemployment and the fact like 
you know, it might be a, a little bit more difficult to get the, the listings, but I think we just keep going with this thing, like saying like, look, the buyers are here. They're, there's there's multiple offer situations. That's actually the problem. It's not that we don't have pre-approval set. It's that the, the problem is converting them to close because it's taking them longer. So we've noticed that in a, it's an extension of the life cycle from when they're the, and they're initially pre-approved to to uh, to closing. And so the, the the advice I can give to any buyer or to to any agent is like, look, if we have a pre-approval, get the right expectations to the buyer that you gotta you got to make sure that they're honed in to say, Hey, look, you're not going to get a, a free house. You're not going to get a no. deal of the century. You got to make a strong offer and make sure that you leave yourself room to, to, to put in a, a strong offer because they're going above asking. And then the same thing on the listing side, it's like, look, we got the buyers, like the buyers are, are not a problem. And in fact, with a lower listing inventory, you actually will probably get more buyers for your property and get a higher above ask. And so the average, you know, uh, under contract, I mean, we're seeing that at 102s, you know, 102%. Uh, so like, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is an extraordinary time. And I think that if, if we frame it right and, and set the expectations for the buyer and the seller, we can come together and close, close deals that, that, that we didn't, you know, that we didn't think possible during a pandemic. That's right. It's funny that you're saying this because I was just on a, um, a call with uh, a South Jersey down the shore, the Jeff Quinton group. Yeah. Um, he sat on a, many of our panels and he's down in Ocean City, Wildwood, right? So we, we were talking and, and one of his agents, uh, David Bachman, I just adore. Mm -hmm. He said uh, one of his scripts, they've been taking seven and 10% listings. Wow. And you want you to know, know some why? people. Cause some people find this as an opportunity and do it, do, do more business or they're just going to, you know, close deals no matter what. Right. right. Well, <laughs> this is why Mr. Seller, because many of the agents have furloughed themselves. And so in order uh, to get them incentivized to get off the couch and maybe sell their buyer a house, we really need to be aggressive in the offer that we're making to the buyer's agent nowadays. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't make sense for them to even get out the house if they're going to interrupt their unemployment. Right if it's not going to work. So, so let's give them something to, and he's taking seven and 10%. And it's also putting in the mind that, Oh wait, these other agents are not working. You're working. And what's the average that people usually take on listings? What are your numbers five, on that? Five or six. Yeah. Five. Five. I mean, average would be you're, five, six. You're taking five. above average in a pandemic, which says that like, look, there are no excuses and, and like yeah. winners and people that are like, just, you know, relentless. And they have absentee owners. So that, Absentee owners now, this is going to be their new normal, is that if you're an absentee owner, you're going to get charged an extra percent because now I got, and it's going to come to me as the listing agent, because now I got to be the physical homeowner when I got to go over for the CO and this and that and whatever. And so mm -hmm. I just found that, that that was a really interesting, and they're, they're also um, having an inventory issue and that just brought to light that, well, then the agents need to go look for the listings that are in the same neighborhood because obviously there's four other buyers that want to buy a house that looks just like that one. So what a listing opportunity, right? Yeah. And you're and not knocking, you're not necessarily so not at what a buyer opportunity. Yeah. And I know that there's software to, to, to find, uh, like remind and some, some of the things that, that you can use to just find those listings. You don't have to knock on doors. You can get this information. Uh, you know, publicly to, to it find says out, you know. occupant. No occupant. Yes. So yeah, no, um, I, I, th I think that's great. And that just goes to show you how, uh, you know, the people that have, it's not the circumstances, it's the, it's the, it's the effort and the, you know, and, and look, the, as a listing agent, you are actually considered the more expert now. It's almost like sellers are, you know, they might even be like, Oh, I, I don't know. And you're like, Hey, I know here's, the solution if you come right. to the table like here's how we're going to do it it's going to cost you a little bit more then you have a seller that's not like doesn't feel like they need to you know strong arm the whole thing and they get out of your way i mean uh, i would imagine as a listener get out of their way get out of get out my way <laughs> yeah he sold them both in three days got out of his way sold them in three days and now they don't even want to bother with him because they feel like they're paying him so much money that he should just handle the whole thing yes and with the buyers i i mean you know we need to be telling our story more because your to your point is the buyers are um, one of the agents was talking about how these buyers still think that they can come to the table and put a 20% off asking price offer. 
And I said, well, then we're not telling our story loud enough. We're allowing somebody right. else like the news to tell our story because real estate is local. And while that, that um, barrier island market is hot, there's a mainland market that might not be hot. There's a Passaic County market that's hot, but there's like a Northern Passaic that might not be hot, you know? Yeah. So we also have to go super local and you're touching a whole bunch of markets because you're licensed in New Jersey. And mm -hmm. um, it just might be wise that we just tell our story a little bit more in what we're seeing because we are in the thick of it. And how do we do that? Do we do a marketing? Do we do a video? And, um, so I think that that was a, uh, an aha for me is, are we doing it at its best or could we do a little something extra to make sure that we are the mind share so that we are the market share as yeah. this is lifting? Now, the best agents that I, you know, that I work with are, are very, very clear with the buyers uh, on, on the right expectations. Like, look, we'll check off as many boxes as you want, but understand that this is the market that we're in and it's not, you know, 10% below asking it's, it's. 2% above asking, you know, so it's, um, some and some buyers are going to have to, I mean, I'm sure you see it too, right? Some buyers have to lose a few from not listening and Correct. then they get like conditioned that like, Oh, okay. So what you were saying is actually happening. And it's true. It's true. They don't believe you. They don't believe you at first. <laughs> well, they just think they're take. They go, look, I mean, I, I myself would probably be the same way, but like, can't we just try it? And then when yeah. I find out that it's not working, then I would probably, yeah. And they definitely don't believe the mortgage guy. If I tell them, they'll just no. be like, listen, guy, <laughs> you're, you're stealing well, all their money. <laughs> like, but, but the great thing is, is that even in this, like we have the benefit of them. We, we just gave them lower rates, like, uh, for loan amounts below 510,000, we had 3%, you know, 2.99, like on a conventional loan, like FHAs are even lower than that. Like this is, unprecedented this is literally the lowest ever in recorded time you know that, that they've been keeping track of rates and so who cares you know what ten thousand dollars is now with these rates it's nothing you actually made out money you know uh because what the, is ten thousand dollars is ten thousand dollars like twenty five dollars it's it's like 40 bucks a month but if if your rate now is a quarter percent or three eighths or half a percent lower than it was uh you know six months ago you just made out. You're actually in the bonus. Maybe you can go fifteen thousand higher for the same payment. So the purchasing power is is definitely there. Rates are all time low. So I would expect people to to get you know full ask on on properties that are desirable, especially when you know we're we're in this situation. So um, I don't know. I'm excited about you know how this is going. Um, I, I, the only concerns I have is just making sure that we we tell the buyers, get them like. Uh, exactly the information they need to make a, a strong offer at the time that they're ready and say, Hey, look, this is not going to be a big deal in the, in the long run, but at least you get a home. Um, and then the same thing with the listing side, like you said, with, um, uh, with uh, Jeff, like, uh, this is, you can make more money in this market if you tweak it because other, other people have, have taken themselves out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We had, there was a girl, she said she had a listing. She had put it on, it came off, it went under contract. They took it off because of COVID and she just put it back on. They got $50,000 more than what they did when they were pre-COVID. So I, you know, my question to her was, did you tell that story or are you going to let the other agent on the other side tell that story? <laughs> and she just was like, that's a great point. I have not told that story. And that, that story needs to be told because $50,000 more, what does that say to me? Go into your temporarily off market inventory, guys. Go into your conditionally yeah. withdrawn inventory. There's yeah. sellers there that need to hear that, hear that uh, message. And Wayne specifically, Wayne, New Jersey, yeah. is one of those markets that is behaving, you know, very aggressive on the seller end. Um, not much on, and you're not coming to the table with an offer well below asking. You're probably going to pay somewhere close to asking. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I think that's great. And then that person should tell that story on social media, you know, exactly. 15 minute, 15 second, 30 second, you know, uh, that's right. You know, all over the place. If you're not doing a lot, that's, that's your story. And then boost that out and then you'll get maybe some more leads and then everything, like you said, conversion in our business 
even on the mortgage and the real estate side is, is everything because it's our time that, that, that is all we have. So if you're keeping track of your conversions, like, like a Jess team, like you said, is if you still, if you see an increase during this time, that then push it, then you're like, wow, like now you believe it, right? Now you're the buyer that, that, that had to see the offers get rejected. And then you're like, oh shoot, right. this is, this does actually work. Everyone that talked about this is, is actually, right. we can actually make money in, in this, in this market and, and make deals happen for people that are, that are, that are looking for their, their next home. That's right. So, so Nick, I know we, you know, we've been trying to keep these calls to about 15, 20 minutes. So is there anything in the last, uh, you know, a minute or two that, that we didn't cover today that you have a burning desire to put out there? Um, or do we pretty much cover everything you wanted to, to get over? Um, the, the only other thing I wanted to say is last week I touched on this forbearance issue that we, you know, was kind of like a, 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 a not a dark cloud, but something that was looming over from us. But I, I can't believe it. And I actually said it then. It was probably going to be, you know, hashed out in, in the next... Yeah, so yesterday it came out from the FHFA, which is the governing body of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, that they've created a policy for how people that got into forbearance can get out of forbearance and then buy a home. You know, and that it, it, there's a couple of different things, but it's kind of looking like maybe like a three month waiting period, not like something extensive like a like a like a bankruptcy would or a foreclosure would have done in the past. So this is excellent news because we were worried about what happens to the people that are now in here. Are they do they have a scarlet letter on them or can we can we make this happen? And and it's starting to see like, all right, we fixed the initial problem, now we're gonna fix this other problem. And so it it, it it's going really great. So if as long you know if the economy bounces back, we got some more if you got people back into the employment market and unemployment doesn't track too, too long like this, um, you know, we're going to ride this like low interest, you know, uh, wave for, for a while. So uh, I would just say like, look, if anyone's, you know, has a buyer, get them excited, get them in my hands. You know, we have a process for this. We have Zoom, we have all this stuff, like let's get them going. And whether it's 30 days or six months, like, Let's get the right expectations and get them get them uh, through the process, and then we'll get through this. We got a whole lot of year left. Yeah. Yes, exactly. We really we do. Make up, we're gonna make up for for, for whatever. It's only we, May. We I mean, honestly, this would have been the opening, the full blown opening of the market. Right now, we would have been in that thick. I don't, you know, I think that we have the time to catch up, but we do have to uh, be mindful that if there was another wave of this, let's just say in the winter. Yeah that we've done our work now to, you know, hopefully yeah. get us through that winter. Look, so. and, and Keller Williams and Gatorade are built for this. Like Absolutely. if there's anyone else that's built for this process or built to withstand a pandemic, it's us. Like there's no doubt. And everyone's got to feel confident, but also empowered to do the work and put in the effort and believe it. Because if you don't believe it, you're going to pull yourself out. Like you said, you're going to furlough yourself and be like, oh, you know, so if you believe it, everything can, can come together on the listing, buying, mortgage, all that stuff. Awesome. Well, awesome. Well, thank you, Nick. Winning Wednesday. Yes, winning Wednesday. <laughs> winning, winning. <laughs> thank Guys, you. as always, thank you for the opportunity. Hey, I want to show this. Nick my, my, um, my poster. What? You see that? that up there? Is that Wonder Woman? What is that? It is my husband's gift to me for my Mother's Day. It is Mary Beth Wonder Woman. With oh! my, fabulous, my fabulous red sneakers that nice. we all have as a family and those fabulous thighs that he that <laughs> <laughs> Nice. You guys gotta give me one of those Keller Williams uh the masks that are going around. Those are cool, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll have to hook you up. All right, Nick. Yeah, we're still trying to get some products that are that are that are you know they're hard to come by though. <laughs> Labeled products. Yeah. Keller Williams yeah. got the inside scoop, but get rate we'll have some Focus stuff too. Focus on your too. mortgages. Get a, get us yeah. some financing. You got it. Thank you guys. Be <laughs> well. Nick, we'll see you next Wednesday. Appreciate okay, you. Bye. Bye. bye.